Good morning, good morning, good morning. That's right. We are here on the road to revenue and happiness. Tomorrow, we have a public training session at 6 a.m. Pacific. You got to join me. But you bring the questions, I'll bring the answer. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to answer some questions. Uh, Team David Meltzer, let's post up there how people can get in touch with me. If you haven't, uh, you missed some of the trainings, they're all free. They're featured on Spotify. Just go there on Spotify, and uh, there's a playlist of all the previous trainings. You can also get the guys' exercises, my books for free, david at dmeltzer.com, pinned below, 949-298-2905. Go ahead, text me, join my community. Justin, good to see you. Jake Share, good to see you as well. Jesse, welcome, welcome. Jo- Joseph, on Office Hours, on Live. You're the man. How's it going? All right, let's take some questions while we are running and gunning here. Very good. How do you use the law of attraction? Well, I use it in a continuum from the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind first. So I don't think that, you know, you just make a vision board and you pay attention to the vision board and things are attracted to it. I think you pay attention and give intention to the vision board. It then goes from the conscious thought into the neural pathways of our subconscious that reinforces and activates our quantum memory, our energy, our frequency that calls out to the universe from those actions, voyage, I mean, actions, thoughts, words, all of those things create the frequency that attracts. So you need the law of Goya uh, in order to effectuate the law of attraction. John Asroff coined the law of Goya. Get off your ass. That's right. Think, say, do, believe all the right things in the conscious continuum. Create a frequency, an energy, a vibration in order to send a beacon out to the universe and say, hey, I want to access this because it already exists. And that would uh, acknowledge what we are connected to. Remember what remember, reconnect, recollect. All those words mean it exists already. It's our job to get it. Go sick them, everybody. Go sick them. Go get it. Use the law of Goya and the law of attraction will work to your benefit for exponential uh, results. And that happens through the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Dave, how do you decide which business idea to pursue? I'm constantly taking inventory of my values every day to decide what to pursue. Personal values, my non-negotiables, my experiential values, my giving values and receiving values. That's how to determine what I want to do and what I want to pursue. Uh, Business-wise, personal-wise, relationship-wise, all of those are contingent upon knowing what I want. Personally, experientially, giving and receiving what I want. Not the why. The why will come once I know the what. And so make sure that you're taking inventory of values so you know what to ask for, who to ask for. Remember, the fastest way to get to where you want to be is to ask someone that's already there for directions. You got it. Happy Thursday, Colleen. We are on fire, Alvin. You got it. Young, good to see you as well. They'll keep these questions coming. Tomorrow, there is a public uh, training session. Submit your questions to me, 949-298-2905. Text them to me or email me, david at dmelter.com, or come live with me tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, a free public training session, executive coaching by me, and I will do it. If you bring the questions, I will bring the answers just like we do live. How do you make sure your mornings start off right? Uh, Well, my morning starts off right because it started last night at 9 p.m. Pacific time. I have a wind down routine. My tomorrow starts today. My tomorrow starts today. So starting off at the highest frequency, not living Camus, the myth of this, of this, let's say that 10 times fast. And instead, living my life at a higher frequency, a baseline that I know can work in the efficient, effective pursuit of my potential. 6 a.m. Eastern time, young, 6 a.m., sorry, Pacific time is my training tomorrow. It is a free group coaching session. Bring the questions, I'll bring the answers. BYOQ, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. You bring the questions just like you are here. I promise you, for an hour, I will bring all the answer. Which coaches do you look up to? Well, I look through my coaches, right? I look to them. I don't look up or down. I look to them for the situational knowledge that they have and experience that they have. And so determinative upon what experiences I want, uh, I will go and seek that knowledge. So Gary Vaynerchuk, 
I go to on the digital marketing side, Blaine Bartlett on the quantum physics side, uh, Jack Canfield uh, on a humanitarian side. There's so many different people that I look through and to in order to effectuate my own acceleration and my own growth. Uh, looking good here. And where is uh, Aaron? Is he in here? Aaron, are you in here, my friend? I'd love to get and go live. Let's see here. Uh, there he is. Delivery Drivers. That is my friend, the owner and CEO of Delivery Drivers, Inc. Uh, and we are going to get him on here. I think I shared a building uh, with Aaron years and years ago, but he has grown tremendously. Then. Coming here from the dark. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Can you see me? Yeah, you got me on audio here and everything. I can hear you. I just can't see you, but uh, that's all right. What? Um, uh, give us a little bit of background of the DDI and uh, how you connect businesses uh, uh, around here with contractor delivery services, which can be utilized. We've got a lot of lot last mile businesses that I've been talking to, and uh, you guys have partnerships on almost every single industry. How would you come up with the idea? Man, uh, the short answer here, and to give a uh, quick background on myself and the company, and, and good morning to everybody in the audience, um, is I was a driver. You know, I mean, you and I are uh, neighbors here. I'm calling from Two Venture, our old office here in Irvine. Yeah, upstairs is where we met a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I was a driver in Orange County delivering <clears throat> food, doing independent catering, and starting my entrepreneurial journey when I was 18, 19 years old, independent, hustling, going to school. And, you know, building some clients and doing some independent catering and things along those lines. So that's where the passion came from. That's where the connection came from. And at the end of the day, uh, early on in our, my career, and I'm proud to say we're heading into year 25 next year for us here at Delivery Drivers, Inc. Um, it's all about the driver. You know, and, and I'm listening to your, your prompts this morning and, you know, why and our motivations and, and what's personal to us. At the end of the day, for us in the business, uh, it's all about supporting the 1099 independent driver. And that has grown over, you know, two decades for you. And I love the concept of overnight success because you're a classic example of someone that's consistent and persistent. And, you know, you saw a need at a young age uh, for those drivers being a driver and it has evolved over 20 years now and the universe or the business model has aligned and grown and evolved uh, to a huge opportunity because there's so many different types of independent delivery drivers in so many different industries. Could you have ever imagined when you first started that the last mile would have been, you know, so free and freelanced that there'd be independent contractors driving instead of cabs, instead of, uh, you know, pizza delivery people, uh, that there would be all of these different last mile solutions where you can enroll, recruit, and utilize manpower, planning, insurance, risk management, et cetera, for all of those industries? You know, uh, to your question, it's a great one. You, you use the word evolved in there uh, at the beginning of your prompt, and it's, it's the right way to look at it uh, because I look at the evolution of our economy, uh, not just in our country, but uh, as a on a global basis. And really, at the end of the day, I thought 20 years ago plus that, okay, food delivery and grocery delivery and the things that were sort of on the nose made a lot of sense, right? That's where we started, and that's where we built the company from. But these days, the businesses that DDI works with uh, and, and the need for delivery and doing a delivery personnel program, right, is a need that every business has. I mean, we talk about pivoting, we talk about uh, you know adapting in COVID times, but it's a bigger conversation about the 21st century. We talk about the death of the brick and mortar economy and the shift of what our small globalized e-commerce based world looks like. Everybody, my spiel, Dave, is every business that has a B2C relationship has a whole new definition on what B2C means. It means bringing my business to that customer, whether you're the small dress shop in Laguna Beach around the corner from my house, or whether you're, you know, the retailer with 27 grocery stores in your Southwest area. Yeah. So it's And there's a lot of business issues involved. It's so funny because, you know, in the simple form, everybody looks at that last mile and the DDI services provided 
and they just assume that it's just a matter of enrolling a driver in order to facilitate delivery. Uh, but like anything else, there's all types of regulatory compliance and taxes and accounting and screening and liabilities that start also evolving around your business that it's not straightforward. And you've been able to evolve with all of the critical business issues. What were some of the skill sets or uh, capabilities that you think that you've had? Because, you know, there's been a ton of people in the delivery business that haven't been able to evolve. Sorry for my Instagram rookie moves there, everybody. Oh, that's so. okay. I see a Chargers helmet. I'm I'm fine with that. So you and I sh share that uh, beautiful. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So you know, I think it's really important because we talk about you know academic intelligence uh, and then emotional intelligence, which you obviously have. Years, almost, yeah, almost half of your business life, but I would say you have a very high adaptable intelligence because there's so many critical business issues that have been uh, ar that have arisen within the context of delivery that a lot of your competitors, you know, have seen and focused in on what they didn't want and have gone out of business. Where you just keep accelerating, growing, and finding new opportunities of how to deal with some of these issues. Yeah, you know, fundamentally, I, I, the way I think about it is we work in human resources, right? And when we work in HR and labor law and our role to support the delivery world and the last mile and, and this entire conversation, it is a never-ending, evolving conversation. Uh, the second core value of my company is to always be evolving and learning, you know, always, always learning and, and applying. And so we promote that and it's the spirit of the business and it's how any business, I don't care the nature of what you are. And I know you have a very diverse audience, right? So, I mean, let's think of it this way, your business and the various companies you're involved with and all of this, we have to change. If you want to be in business for five years or the next five years or the next 25 years, we always, no matter what we do, have to be looking at that adaptability and a lifelong quest for learning and, and whatever it is, maybe new marketing, maybe new finance techniques, Maybe new 1099 labor laws because, like, I live in the 1099 world, right? Talk about AB5 in California and Prop 22 and this in, uh, evolving debate. You know, I have to be ready to go left or right based on yes or no on Prop 22 in about two weeks for all of my California clients. But we're ready, and it's a lot about education and, and learning, to your point. Yeah, and you do. You take the focus of learning the lessons and adapting and utilizing pain, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial pain as a turn signal, not a stop sign, allowing you to get to better situations and continue to grow. Uh, the other thing, just lastly, is beyond learning yourself, uh, you've always taken the role that I've known you as a teacher, a mentor. You know, you've worked in Orange County, especially with other entrepreneurs, uh, to, you know, subscribing to the philosophy that all tides rise uh, together and empowering others to empower others, which obviously is my personal mission in life, which is why I have such an affinity and alignment with what you're doing. How important it is explain to people to learn while you're teaching. And, you know, I, I find that my teaching provides me the biggest lessons more than, than life has. You know, for you, teaching and mentoring is such a big part of your life. How important is that to your business and, and how you apply what you're teaching to your own business? You almost stole my answer from me, right? It's like the selfish part of my answer starts with as a lifelong learner individually, I love to teach and I love to, you know, learn a little bit more from that interaction and the questions, whether I'm mentoring a younger entrepreneur or whether I'm helping like my kids with their, you know, uh, student entrepreneur programs at their schools and those types of things you learn from that interaction those and being challenged. You know, by being an open leader, if you uh, to apply it into the work context on, on that side, it's absolutely imperative. When, when you're teaching, I find this, have you ever said to yourself, God, that's really a good idea. I should do that. <laughs> Sometimes, right? But then it's all about applying it and sort of paying it for it because you mentioned all tides rising. And I just, I believe if, 
you know, you're on that right vibration and we're all sharing the right message. And I support freedom and independence and hustle and entrepreneurialism across like the core of who I am and learning is a big part of that. So if that's what we're doing, I'm so excited that like part of what we do at TDI becomes teaching new independent drivers. Like here's some of the rules. Here's some of like your rights. Here's what you can do as a 1099 worker, or here's some of your options or here's maybe what you don't know. So can I help you be a better entrepreneur? Did you know you can negotiate your rates with Uber? Oh my gosh. Like, let's talk about that and talk about the five tenets of negotiation. Like it's so cool to be able to apply all these concepts. Cause as you've known me for a long time, I'm just the teacher at heart. So putting that into business, that's fun to me. Yeah. And you subscribe to a lot of my great lessons of being more interested than interesting, being kind to your future self, doing good deeds helping others and empowering others. Now, I know people can find you at Delivery Drivers, Inc., but who should best reach out to you? What, you know, if someone's out there, is it the independent contractors? Is it the industry leaders? Who, who are the best people to reach out to you for your business? You know, I'm, I'm going to say in a, in a broad sense, and then I'll try to be a little more specific and not so political. But the first open answer is anybody who is interested. It could be an individual worker, somebody who is a 1099 worker that has questions or comments or wants to engage in a conversation. Or, of course, it could be somebody from a business, you know, corporate world that's running a business that has some degree of a delivery need, whether an existing workforce that needs to be built and approved and, you know, say, hey, I have 1099s. I'd like to improve the benefits to my workforce or, you know, or whether I need to pivot because of COVID and figure out how to build a delivery program, you know, in 30 days and get up and running. So my restaurant does not shut down. Right. Things like that. So if you're on the business side, definitely reach out to me, my team, um, you know, through Instagram here, of course, or, you know, LinkedIn is another great thing. You can find me Aaron Hagman on there um, or DDI of course as well. So, but don't forget, I'll go back to the first part of the answer, Dave, which is, you know, we're here for the workers as well. So if you have questions, if you have comments if you'd like to see how we could even help you on an individual basis you know we're here to engage and maybe help who knows i love it man thank you aaron for everything that you do i know that your business will continue to grow adapt and evolve you've done over that you've been able to do that for over two uh decades and now reaping the hockey stick reward of what i call aggregate growth and exponential growth and compound interest of just being a good person so thank you so much for all you do uh, good to see you brother we'll have to catch up soon yeah, it's weird that we have to do this and we're blocks away, but good to see you. Yeah, no, just take it I was like, you're half a mile away, I think, from the office here, but <laughs> that's a good to see you here nonetheless. So right be on. well, my friend. Take care, and thank you so much. What a great business. They're all over the place, right? The last mile is one of those areas when I tell you to align your capabilities, your skills, your knowledge, and your desire to see where it's synergistic or supplementary to what's doing well now. Last mile. If you want to know what's doing well now, the last mile is doing well, and it will do well in the future. Uh, so Diamond Mind Results. I think that's Mikey Diamond. Uh, good to see you there. What's the best way to vote to support them? Uh, get out and vote. Vote for what you want. Absolutely. Uh, Edgar Martinez. What? Team Dave Meltzer. Remember tomorrow, public coaching session. Uh, just go ahead, email me to join us. David at dmeltzer.com. Text me 949-298-2905. Love to have you join us. If you miss any of the trainings, it's the number one downloaded podcast for the playbook. That's right. Featured on Spotify. There's a playlist of all of them. You can get your exercises, guides, books for free from me. Go ahead. Reach out. David at dmelzer.com. Let's answer a few more questions. Warm up for uh, Friday. Can you tell us about your get out and vote show? Uh, David McCourt. And I have a show to inspire people to vote. We don't care what party, what ideas. We just want everyone to be able to utilize their obligation, responsibility, and honor to voice your opinion, right? You have no right to complain unless you voice your opinion. Voice your opinion, everybody. We want you to get out and vote. Vote, vote, vote. Awesome. Uh, most impactful movie you've watched recently? Most impactful movie? Hmm. Uh, God, I would always say The Greatest Showman because I watch that about every week, it feels like. Um, I'm trying to think of impactful movies. I, unfortunately, I don't go to many movies lately, so I'm going to have to stick with The Greatest Showman. 
<laughs> I just watch it. It's saved. Uh, what's your opinion about opening an organic juice bar in this economy? If your rent's low enough and your audience is big enough or you're doing it online, yes. If you can reverse engineer a quantitative Rocky, great movie as well. Um, I got to see a business case. Remember, it's timing and risk tolerance. It's location, regionalization, leadership. There's so many variables when people ask me kind of broad-ended questions. Should I open a bike shop? Where? How much is your rent? Right? What types of bikes? Where's your audience online, in person, email? Do you have a database? Do you have a community already? The time and risk tolerance. So if you need help with that, I'd be happy to do so. Email me, david at dmelter.com. Come ask questions every Friday for free. They're here. We are doing it at 6 a.m. Pacific time this Friday, a public coaching session for everybody. Bring your own questions. I'll bring the answers. All righty. Let's see here. How do you practice improving your focus? Um, great question. Focus is a practice. You can only focus on one thing at a time. So I practice all types of focus mechanisms of focusing on one thing, back to the other, back to the other. It appears as if I'm doing two things at once, but I'm really quick at focusing and refocusing. So part of the practice of focus is to refocus. Uh, I practice every single day, paying attention to things, holding my attention for a certain amount of time, releasing it. There's a variety of things to utilize the muscle of focus. Remember, the mathematical equation of luck is what you pay attention to and give intention to equals the coincidences of your life. The mathematical equation of luck. Join me Friday. We'll keep on answering these. That's tomorrow. Go ahead, email me, david at dmelter.com. How do you define collective belief? A uh, collective belief is a collective consciousness. And so what if we're able to empower others to empower others, we're able to impact others to impact others and we can create a collective consciousness in the same repetitive nature that we can create our own consciousness, our own frequency. We can do that uh, to a collective, uh, to billions of people. And we can shift the frequency or energy of the collective so that we live more in an abundant world than a scarce world, more in a happy world than a sad. We can intend or attend to positive things instead of negative things. One of my main missions in life is to empower over a billion people to be happy, create a collective consciousness of happiness. People that are happy don't get sick. They're abundant. Uh, they help people. They don't attack people. Uh, there's a variety of things that happiness does. It even strengthens your immune system, so it protects you. And I want everybody to get on that page that not only create their own consciousness, but empower others to empower others to create a collective consciousness or collective belief. Um, how do you pivot your business swiftly during this pandemic? Look within to find without. Look within yourself at the values that you have in order to effectuate what you want outside of yourself. Uh, looking at the skills, the knowledge, and desire, how they're aligned with, as I mentioned earlier, supplementary and synergistic to what's doing well today, uh, synergistic and supplementary to maybe what's stable, or synergistic or supplementary to what you feel will do well in the future. Things like the last mile businesses uh, that are doing well today, that are stable, and will do well in the future. Those are great things to apply your capabilities, your skills that you have, your knowledge of what and who that you have, as well as your desire to must be what you can be aligned with that. Um, and we're looking for Isha. Uh, hopefully you're here, my friend. And we're going to talk about the founder of Girls Frontier. And here we go. <clears throat> How do you balance serving yourself and serving others without spreading yourself too thin? Well, number one, you can't give what you don't have. So if you don't take care of yourself, you will not be able to take care of others. Uh, for me, it's a throughput of utilizing my five daily practices of taking inventory of my values, asking for help, being a student, especially on my calendar, how productive, accessible, and gracious I am with the activity I have planned, I don't have planned, and my sleep, uh, doing things now and prioritizing them by those values, making sure that I'm doing what's most important first, not what seems to be urgent, especially to please others and to seek their approval. And then finally, keeping efficient and statistically successful by practicing ending fear. And if I can do that, uh, those five daily practices will allow me to keep things uh, completely aligned and prioritized. Uh, we're going to go live with my friend, a girl's frontier. Isha, welcome, welcome, welcome. There she is. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining me. 
Thank you so much for having me today. You're another overnight success starting early in your life uh, with your Girls Frontier. And obviously, uh, for me, it's a priority because I have three young women uh, that I am helping to raise and empowering them. And I have shown them your stuff at a Girls Frontier to show them what is possible in their lives so that they can learn from you and see someone like them that can be so successful, not only in her own respect, but to help other people uh, with your toolbox and what yes. extraordinary thing. Well, I know you started this when you were a senior in high school. Give us a little I, bit of background. I, I started it when I was a freshman. I'm a oh, senior fresh right now, but I started my organization when I was a freshman in high school. Oh, I thought you graduated. Oh, even better. So you, <laughs> you were a freshman, so you're old school at this. <laughs> That's yes. amazing. I'm a senior right now, so yeah, one more year for me. Well, lots lots changed since uh, your freshman year, obviously, uh, as a student especially. But give me a little bit of background on why there's so many things you could be doing as a freshman. You thought it was important to start a Girls Frontier. Um, when I was younger, my parents were always uh, super helpful, and they always were really encouraging to me and like helped me pursue any dream I wanted to do, whether it was like making little trinkets or like writing little children's books. It was something that um, my dad and I always did together. And I always had like this amazing support system. And I kind of realized that there are a lot of people out there who don't have that support system to show them that they can be leaders, that these young girls have the potential to be whoever they want to be. They don't have the mentors to look up to, like role models. And so like, that's where I realized I could fill those gaps with my organization and provide young girls with mentors and skills so they can know to, that they can become leaders of any industry. You kind of focus on three things, education, mentorship, and what I love, the component that a lot of people don't talk about is outreach. Uh, you know, asking for help is a huge uh, asset to my own life. I always tell people to say, oh, you know, what would you tell yourself when you were a freshman in high school and I tell them it's the same two words that sit next to my nightstand today, which is radical humility, which is really outreach that I'm on a constant journey to find people who sit in the situation that I want to be in and ask them for help. Uh, but for some reason, all of us, including me, were afraid to reach out and to ask for help. Why do you think young people particularly are so adverse to asking for help? Well, I'm going to be honest, I was for a really long time. And it's kind of scary because you're scared you're going to be told no. And then it's like that fear of like failure, I guess, of being scared to self that someone's going to say no. But when I was interviewing people over the summer, what really made a difference is I asked um, these seven women leaders, what's one big piece of advice? Like, what's the most important piece of advice you would give to a young girl? And um, one of them told me that the one piece of advice she gave is that don't be afraid to ask for help from mentors. Don't be afraid to reach out and um, continue to develop those relationships because people are willing to help. You just have to grab those opportunities as they come. Absolutely. And I, it's so nice to be a little bit older because you start realizing, gosh, how much I want to help younger people. And that actually allows me to have a better perspective on asking for help myself and thinking that not everybody in the world's a gatekeeper. We're not going to receive no's that, you know, I take the perspective, everyone in my life's a sponsor and a power sponsor of me, that they're here to either know someone that can help me or them themselves help me and know someone that helps me. Now you did something extraordinary beyond starting uh, the girls frontier your freshman year. And more now even through the pandemic, you actually wrote a book called her Toolbox learning to be a female leader with advice from women in power. Um, and, you know, writing a book, I've, uh, I'm on my eighth book, so I know it's not an easy journey while everything else in life is happening. You know, for you, how were you able to manage your time, balance your life through COVID, through the pandemic, and publish a book while all this going on? You know, so many young people are like, I don't have time. My girls are like, Dad, I don't have time to do this. How did you publish a book during this time? Actually, um, with Corona and like COVID situation, it kind of helped me a little, you know, it gets rid of the whole, I can't travel during summer. And so that's like something that would take a lot of time during summer, it's gone. And so I have to fill my times somewhere. And it wasn't something that 
just like came up out of nowhere. I've definitely been thinking about it. And I interviewed seven um, incredible women uh, leaders who are all tops in whatever industry they're in. And I compiled their advice together into a book to provide a basic blueprint for young girls anywhere who wanted to start in and to show them that they can be leaders coming from any situation, from any background. And I see how, and honestly, it was kind of nice. It was definitely kept me really, really busy. There were days I was just like working, writing all day long, but it really was um, like one of those things that are really fulfilling, you know? And I very much enjoyed doing it. And if anything, COVID gave me more time to be able to focus on that. Now with um, school starting and stuff and like senior year kind of really in full fledged right now, it's definitely a lot more of a time management kind of thing right now with everything going on. And where do you want to go to college? Um, I'm not actually uh, decided yet. I have a few schools that I'm looking at to as my tops, but I'm really not sure yet. That's all right. I totally understand. <laughs> I got so many kids. Um, uh, real quickly, too, um, of the seven women that you interviewed, uh, I'm on a journey or a mission to empower people to be happy. And I feel as if a lot of times through comparison, we rob ourselves of joy. We create resistance, voids and shortages of ourselves. And as different as those seven women were, these powerful women that you interviewed, there had to be a common denominator. One of the things I love about doing my uh, podcast the playbook with the greatest celebrities athletes entertainers billionaires millionaires and entrepreneurs is there seems to be a common denominator within them that you share as well what was the lesson that you learned as far as a common denominator between all seven women was there one thing that stood out to you there was actually a couple um one a few things were well, everyone emphasized the importance of hard work they're like even with all of the opportunities you get along the way none of it's going to be possible if you don't work really hard and another thing they emphasize is everyone makes mistakes and it's the capability learning the capability of learning from your mistakes is incredibly important and if you can't learn from your mistakes that's where you can fall short yeah no doubt and i think you know i'll give you a few lessons from my perspective too i am not a big fan of the word work i i believe there's activity i get paid for activity i don't get paid for. If you learn those lessons that you're talking about, then you can enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential and have more activity you get paid for. And other people will be looking upon you for the abundance that you've created to give through you like you have at such a young age uh, to other people. And my most common denominator, uh, and I'd love to hear if you think this is true within the context of those seven women as well, is I found that the people that are most successful passionate, purposeful, and profitable uh, have what you have, which is a desire that they must be what they can be. Was that a shared commonality between those seven women as well? Yeah, everyone. I actually hosted a Q&A with these women uh, for the Day of the Girl, um, I think last weekend or so. And we had a conversation with them. And these women, all of them, every single one of them talked about how the reason that like they consider themselves happy and successful is because they're good at what they do and they love what they're doing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you can learn to love what you do. I always say the same percentage of everyone's life sucks. The people like them and you and I, we are able to find the light, the love and the lessons in the suck. We're able to learn to love what we're doing, even if, if, if originally uh, we don't seem to like it. I would say the first 10 minutes of everything sucks. So you got to learn to love as fast as you can what you're doing. It's much more powerful than loving everything that you do. That's not realistic. And I absolutely love what you're doing. I love your book. I love your, your project and your foundation. I guess it is the Girls Frontier and I see unbelievable things and you give me such great confidence for our future and especially my three daughters future. So thank you for being such a great role model. Thank you for providing so much mentorship, support and outreach for so many young women in the world and all women in the world should look to you for that type of situational knowledge. Where can people find you beyond 
at a girl's frontier um my website's www.agirlsfrontier.org i have a facebook page at, which is a girl's frontier as well um i'm on linkedin for a girl's frontier or my personal linkedin is isha will potty and um i've actually had a few other um news articles come out and interviews that i've done on npr i have done a few podcast interviews as well a girl's life magazine and um yeah that's a lot and yeah. find you and don't forget we can get her book as well her toll box uh learning to be a female leader with the advice from women in power the seven powerful women that she interviewed and the lessons that uh you've learned thank you so much for joining me i look forward to having you back on if there's anything i can do let me know of course thank you thank you take care bye bye all right everyone unbelievable people today great entrepreneurs all ages all backgrounds and uh wow you know when you have daughters that's what you want to have a daughter like isha she's amazing uh check her out at a girl's frontier if you haven't already um anyway i'm gonna take one more question and then i gotta get going to andy for sellers today so excited about the mfc eo and my boy carlos reyes is gonna meet me i'm here in st louis uh here we go um last question remember tomorrow i'll be answering all these questions it is a public coaching session for free 6 a.m pacific 9 a.m eastern time if you have not joined it's just david at dmelter.com you can join my text community 949-298-2905 if you miss the training and the coaching session just go to spotify entrepreneur all platforms it's featured on spotify a playlist is uh, featured there as well of all my trainings check it out Last question, how do I adjust my mindset so I know to never quit? Well, your mindset should be on detaching your emotions from the outcome so there's no chance of quitting. When you attach your emotions, the energy emotions, the attention and intention to the journey, to the enjoyment of the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential, then you're on the right track. Uh, so that is the key to utilizing the journey of happiness and empowerment, which everyone can have the mindset there's more than enough and you will never quit. Enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. Thank you everyone so much. I will see you tomorrow, 6 a.m. David at dmelzer.com. Most importantly, thank you to my guests and be kind to your future self. Do good deeds. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern.